We don't dare let that pickus gang defy us in this manner. Get ammunition. this time and wipe him out. It's a trap. When I capture that gang, it's going to be in the open. But Hopkins, we've got them located. Let's corral them in their own hideout. I won't sacrifice a man foolishly. They've got that canyon mined. They'd massacre us like rats. and asking. I can tell by the expressions on your face that Hopkins is still in circulation. We done our darndest, Pat, but the yellow gizzard cuss just won't come through the pass. Nice of you boys to try to kill Hopkins so that I could meet Bob. But now that he's still alive, I reckon I'll have to run my chances. Law, Paul, you wouldn't take such a chance. We ain't gonna let you, Dad. With the price on your head, you can't risk it. You stole for that kid for 20 years now, so as he could be brung up like a gent. But I agree with desolation. You ain't gonna meet him. I'm giving orders in this outfit, not taking them. And I'm going to meet Bob in spite of all the sheriffs, marshals, and rewards this side of Missouri. You fellas stay here till I come back. I don't want you starting anything without me. I hate that half-brother of mine. Worse than I hate Hopkins. 
Well, I ain't seen him for nigh on 20 years, except in them newspapers Pa saved. But if he tries to make a dent out of me, I'll plug him. If I guess not, Pa won't bring him here. He won't want his precious baby to know he's a bandit. <laughs> I just learned this in the payroll on today's stage, trying to out figures. This is too good. We three will handle this. We'll act as a reception committee to our baby half-brother. I'd like to see my scrapbook. Uh, it'll explain just how good a player I am. Did you ever play football? A little. Well, I made the varsity at Central. Central? I never got in that fast a company. Why, Mr. Wilson. He's Bob Wilson, American leading tackle for the last three years. I followed your career ever since you went to college. There's more to this football stuff than I ever realized. We had a clever school that cut out all your publicity. And I found more than any other girl at school. It's too bad that I didn't know that. Uh, we have become better acquainted. Was that story true about your marrying an actress? I should say not. That was just some bad publicity. And it almost cost me my place on the team. Then you're not married. No, ma'am. Come out of it, deadpan. The coach is running wild with the payroll. Did it? Not much. I'll be back to normal about Sunday. <laughs> nice going, youngster. You got rid of him quick.
Looks like I'm not rid of them yet. What in tarnation are you doing with our stagecoach? Well, uh, some ages tangled with your driving guard, and during the mix-up, I got away with the outfit. Oh, is that so? <laughs> Hope it didn't jolt you up too much. Oh, you were wonderful. I don't know what we would have done without you. <laughs> well, I was, I thought it would take a minute time with a big one. Can you understand why there's beef dry and fast up for me? Yeah, ordinarily, we were getting just a little bit of a little bit of a Dad! What? Ruth, darling. What? What's the matter? He's driving the stage. But Dad was held up. This looks like the work of the Pecos gang. Was their leader an old man? No, he was a big bruiser with two others. There were only three in the pack. You should have seen this youngster tear into him. My rheumatism was ailing, or I'd have helped. But I wasn't needed. Dad, they would have captured the money in me if it hadn't been for Bob throwing that big brute off the stage. Well, folks, my dad was supposed to meet me. Think I'll look him up. Hope I see you soon. I hope so. Huh? Bye. Goodbye. Hey, Dad. You're wrong, mister. All my offsprings were females. Darn the luck. Uh, then you're not George Wilson? George Wilson? George Wilson. Never heard of the man, son. Oh. Sorry. Come on. Listen, fellas, I just saw this fellow Picos in the alley. Let's get to Marshall. Marshall, nothing. We'll catch him ourselves. And get the reward, and we won't have to split it with the law.
What caused this rumpus? Uh, these three men were beating an old fellow up, and, and I tried to prevent it. We had Pegasus captured until this interfering judge butted in and let him escape. Pegasus? Are you sure? Certainly I'm sure. We had our reward all tied up. Hey, men, get your horses. We'll trail Pegasus. Who is this fellow Pegasus that I just helped escape? The ruthless leader of the worst band of highwaymen in the Nefesis country. It was his sons who held us up. Gee, I only helped him out because he was old. And anyhow, three to one never did look even Stephen to me. Did you locate your father? Not yet. I better get looking for him. Well, I asked Dad about George Wilson, and he said he's never heard of him. Never heard of him? Gee, that's funny. Well, I'm sure this is where Dr. Webster told me that he'd meet me. Well, Dad has a map in his office with all the ranches in the county marked. Let's see if we can locate him on that. Oh, fine. Nelford, Biggs, Silver Tip Mine. Why, that's very mysterious. There's no Wilson in the county. Well, I can't understand it. I'm sure this is where Dad told me to meet him. Oh, I wouldn't worry. Dad will help you find you. Oh, of course he will. We should stay with us until you can locate your father. Gee, I'd like to, but I must find him. Oh, but you will. I'm sure of it. He's a mighty nice horse, but I don't like depriving you of him. Oh, Sonny hadn't taken your liking to him. I wouldn't have offered him. Bob, I know horsemanship. You seem to know all the tricks. If you were raised in the East, as you say you were, where'd you learn them? Oh, well, I don't know all the tricks, but uh, for several years I've been spending all my summers on a ranch with a friend in Wyoming. Thanks again for your horse. I'll take good care of him. Oh, you're welcome, Bob. Dad, don't you like Bob? I like him a lot, honey. But I'm suspicious of him. Suspicious of him? What about? About the way he helped Pegasus to escape. The more I think of that, the harder it is to swallow. Oh, but he said the men were beating an older man. That would give him reason to interfere. Yeah, that's right. But about this man, Wilson, that's supposed to be his dad. It just happens there isn't a Wilson in this entire basin. Unless he's changed his name. Unless who's changed his name? Pecos. Pecos? You don't think Pecos is Bob's father? I hope not. But he's the only man that I know of that we're not plumb sure of his real name. Well, if Bob was one of the Pecos gang, would he have interfered with the holdup of the stage and delivered the money in me? Now, would he, Dad? Would he? Well, that's just the one point that makes it hard for me to believe that he is a member of that tribe. But don't you tell him that I'm suspicious of him when he comes back here. Happen to be George Wilson? Who's George Wilson? He's my father. Well, it seems funny you don't know your own father. Well, uh, something kept him from meeting me, so I set out to locate him. Well, I hope you find him. It seems reasonable to want to know your own dad. 
Well, good luck. Thanks. You boys stay here. I'm going to have a talk with Bob. Supposing he turn you over for the reward. He ain't that breed. Howdy, sir. Howdy. Uh, do you happen to know George Wilson? George Wilson? What's he to you? Well, he's my father. I used to know George Wilson pretty well. Are you his youngest, Bob? That's me. Where is Dad? Let's go over here and rest our saddles. <laughs> All right, sir. I heard about your saving the payroll for the Fargo. It was quite a trick. Tell me about it. Not much to tell. Where's my dad? Is he sick or something? Well, not plum sick, but... Do you know why he didn't meet me? Well, he wanted to, but a lot of things interfered with it. Will you take me to him? When will you take me to my dad? Well, I'll ask George when he'll see you and let you know. Stopping at the hotel in town? No. I'm living at Marshall Hopkins. You can find me there. Well, you're living with a man that thinks a heap of law and order. Hopkins is the type of citizen this nation needs. He don't hate lawbreakers any worse than I do. My dad always wrote me since I was a kid to keep within the law. I kind of made respect for law my creed. I studied law, <laughs> even though dad didn't know it. That's one of the things I want to surprise him with. <laughs> Boy, will he be surprised to learn I've majored in criminal law, just so I can send criminals where they belong. Yeah. I reckon he'll be mighty surprised. Well, I'll get word to you at Hopkins when George will see you. Uh, say, can you tell me why Dad's not known in these parts? Well, I believe George would rather tell you that himself. said about hating our breed, sending us where we belong. Let's put him away. Yeah, remember the beating he gave us at the stagecoach.
Put him on his horse and hope he lives. For your own sakes. wrong in bringing the kid back. He's heard him say it's for law. What kind of a father do you think he is? You expect him to kill his own kid? Dad don't get him. He'll turn us all in. Is that fair? stand for it. Oh, I'm warning you. If he learns your Pecos, he'll turn you in for the reward. I'll risk his learning it. Now you fellows clear out. And when he's all right again, I'll blindfold him and take him out and turn him loose. You're Pecos. Why didn't you tell me you were my dad? I don't know. Something just kept holding me back. Then why did you send for me? That was a, a big mistake. But I, I wanted to see you. I'd been reading about you in the, in the papers, hearing about you from old Doc Webster that, that raised you. But I, I just wanted to see you and talk to you. Now that you know what I am, I, I suppose I oughtn't to have sent for you. There's something very fine in your makeup, Dad, to raise me the way you have. I ain't taking no credit for it. Your mom made me promise when she found I was thieving that you wouldn't be raised amongst a lot of rustlers and road agents like your half-brothers was. And when she learned that you was all right with old Doc Webster, she didn't live very long. You was just two year old when, when she passed on. Well, now that you know who I am, there's thousands offered for me and the boys. Well, what are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna make men out of you, all of you. I'm gonna take you and the boys to Wyoming. There's an old fellow up there been wanting me to run his property for him. They'll never know you're there. And they'll soon forget about your record here. You ain't getting mixed up with us in any way. I reared you right. You're going out of here and forget us. When I leave here, you're going with me. Clean. <laughs> Clean. Clean. <laughs> 
Well, you're not too big to be boss. Now you lay down there. Let me patch up that head of yours. And then we'll hark back some more. How's old Doc Webster getting along? Oh, he's fine. Something frightful had happened to you. Well, I, I had a little accident. A little accident? Why, it's four days since you've gone. Dad had the men out searching for you. He was positive the Pecos gang had done away with you. Why the Pecos gang? Well, he figured that they killed you for interfering with their holdup. Where is your dad? I must see him. Well, I shouldn't tell anyone. But I can trust you. Dad had a tip that the Pecos gang was going to rob the bank of Bliss, and he has over 50 men ready to capture the entire gang. Bob! Bob, wait! Bakers. Ah, oh, Dad, I thought you promised to give up this life. Uh, I was on my way to keep that promise. There ain't much time left for talking, Bob, but I'm glad that I can tell you that I was on my way to give myself up, do my time, and come out clean, like you said when Hopkins got me. I gotta get you to the cabin, Dad. You're not washed up yet. Well, yes, I am, son. There's only a few seconds left. Take care of yourself, son. Take care. You say it wasn't downright murder. Paul told you he was going to give up. 
They didn't give him a chance. What kind of a man are you? Hopkins trusts you. You can get right into his house. If you don't finish him, then you're no son of my dad's. Here. Here's Dad's gun. Take it. And if you don't get Hopkins, fetch that gal of his in here. He'll follow her. And then we can wipe out Pa's score. Killing Pa to prove these law hounds ain't going to let us reform like you thought they would. You get Hopkins, and we'll go to Wyoming with you. Yeah, Hank's right. That's one way you can show your appreciation the way Dad raised you. Keep you awake. Thanks. A 40 hour stretch is trying on the eyes. Is the marshal up yet, Miss Ruth? He's shaving. Insists on starting out again with only three hours sleep. Where are you heading? For Marshal Hopkins. What is this? We're guarding every trail. The Pecos gang is still loose. See anything of them? Why, no. Uh, I'm saying, uh, Marshal Hopkins, all right for me to go through? Yep, we're guarding the house. Okay. Frank, will you get my horse? Right, sir. Hello, Bob. Hello, uh, Marshal. Buck, you better get your horse. Bob, I'm not asking for any explanations of where you've been or why. But I want to warn you. We've killed the head of the Pecos gang, and we're out to get the rest of them. Don't make the mistake of being seen with any of them. We offer no quarter. Well, being a stranger, I wouldn't know him. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, goodbye, baby. Now you stay close to the house. Bye, Dad. I want you to know I trust you completely. I can't explain everything now, Ruth. Maybe I never can. But knowing you has been fine. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have? Why, well, I don't understand. Well, I told you. I can't explain everything now, but if I ever can, I'll send for you. Circle out as far as three buttes, then center back to this point. 
Right. Right. Are you all right, Marshal? Thanks, Bob. That's one I owe you. Looks as though it'll stay this time. Even a rattlesnake sounds a warning. Have you seen Hopkins? Yeah. He had a little accident and headed for the ranch. Hey, will you ask Miss Ruth to meet me here? Sure. Send for me, Bob. I'm leaving here, Ruth. And I just couldn't go without telling you goodbye. Leaving? But why must you go, Bob? Good work, Bob. Now we'll wipe out Hopkins and his entire crew of law hounds. You're going through great, kid. I figured you'd bring the gal instead of kill the old man. Why, you contemptible cad, playing on my affections to aid a band of murderers. But, Ruth, I... Come on, kid. We'll powwow at the shack. Maybe your girlfriend would like some food, Sprout. 
Better feed her. Sure, her love has turned to hate. And you know hate takes a lot of feeding. Yeah, kid, you better feed her. Maybe she won't think you're as bad as we are. Just don't want to give her a chance to wipe you out. That female's faster than a sidewinder. I wish you'd believe me. I wasn't surprised that they're taking you as you were. Oh, don't add life to what you've already done. Honest, I didn't. We'll need you. Now sit down and cool off. Being the baby, we've got to wash the dishes. So hop to it. Wanna wash or wipe, son? I'll wash. gets the girl for himself with no argument. You fellas wouldn't dare harm that girl, would you? 
Now, don't boil over, Sprout. Deal the kid in. It's only fair. He brung her here. Sit in, kid. You might win. Then we could bid for your prize. Put your guns on the table. And no shenanigans. This game will be on the up and up. And look at your hand, Bob. You might win. Two pair. That girls me. and sevens. That beats me. Hank, you always was lucky. I'm playing four aces. I'll take the girl. Here, boys. Take this one, too. I'm sorry, honey. I know this is a big disappointment to you. Oh, not so much, Dad. Well, help us. 
If Bob hadn't a hog tied us for you, you never would have gotten us. Now do one decent thing anyhow. Turn that kid loose. He wasn't in on our racket and never did anything wrong in his life. No? Then how come Ruth was here? We stole her to trap you, stupid. The kid's plumb innocent. Take him away, Buck. Wait a minute, boy. Turn him loose. Bob, you heard what your brother said. I'm mighty glad. Thanks. Think you can get back to the ranch? I can make it all right. All right, men. Let's get going. I'm sorry I mistrusted you. I don't blame you. But now you can understand why I was leaving this country. When I discovered that uh, I was a half-brother to that outfit, I just couldn't ask you. Oh, but you should have known that that could make no difference in my love for you. I've no fear of family stains overcoming environment. Oh, sweetheart. They must have broken the pattern that you were molded from. Oh, Bob, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, man. <laughs> 